What's up, guys? Mike here, Head Trader, True Trading Group, and March 12th is on pace to be the worst day in Dow history. The worst per, uh, percent decline was back in 2008 at 7.87%, if I'm not mistaken. And right now, we're down, as I make this video, we've got about 20 minutes before the close, and we're down 8.7% on the Dow, down well over 2,000 points. We were down you know, 9% um, earlier today. The bloodbath continues. The sell-off continues. The coronavirus fears continue to rage. Havoc in financial markets. Um, things are getting worse. Uh, Major League Baseball is suspending spring training. NBA suspended the rest of the season. NHL did the same. The MLS did the same, suspended their season. New York has banned gatherings of 500 people or more. Um, you know, schools are closed. There's, you know, companies are setting mandatory work from home. Um, you know, it's just crazy. This is getting crazy, but unfortunately, this is what we have to do to, you know, contain the spread of this virus. And the faster that we contain this virus, the faster we can get over it and, and move on. So I actually think the craziest, most aggressive forms of, you know, social distancing and everything that we have to do now, let's get it over with now um, so we can get, get this virus under control as quickly as possible because it's raising real hell in financial markets. And I think there's no question we're going into a recession at this point, guys, if we're not already in one and there's no way around it now. And as you know from my last video, we're officially in bear market territory. We're down about 27% from the recent highs. Um, you know, there's there's no no denying now that the, the bear market is in full effect. Um, and what we're gonna talk about in this video today is a couple of things. First, I'm gonna talk to you about how to average down on your position. Um, this is a really interesting video because I, I always tell traders, uh, new inexperienced traders, and I still believe this. So please do not take this video and the lesson I'm about to cover with you and just think that you're just going to go out and you're going to start averaging down on your positions if you're a new and inexperienced trader. Um, because there are times when it makes sense to average down. There are times that it doesn't. And averaging down requires a certain level of risk management that new inexperienced traders typically do not have. But I want to, you know, I averaged down big on my TVX position today and it ended up working out beautifully for me. Um, but um, I need to walk you through that whole process and what I was thinking and why I added so that um, I don't want new and experienced traders to just watch this video and then all of a sudden they buy a stock tomorrow, it goes down and they buy more. Um, there's a big difference between averaging down on a losing trade and averaging down on a trade that is still intact. Um, and that was what I did today. I averaged down on a trade that was still very much intact. Um, but new traders, you know, will have a hard time making that distinction. So that's why I always recommend to all of our TGD members to, you know, never average down on a losing trade. If you're a new and experienced trader, my more experienced members, we talk a lot about, I teach them about averaging down on positions and it works out really well. Um, so that's a lesson we're going to cover today, guys, in lieu of this market chaos. I'm just reminding you all again. I do um, every day in chat after the market closes from 4.30 to 5.30, I do a one hour live Q&A to answer any of your questions. Anyone that has questions about coronavirus, Russia, Saudi Arabia, oil, now the, the economic stimulus package, what's going on between Democrats and Republicans trying to figure out fiscal stimulus. The Fed just came in and the Fed is injecting $1.5 trillion of liquidity into the bond market. What does that mean? Um, you know, anything that you want to discuss, there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions right now. A lot of people are scared. They don't know what to do. Believe me, guys, this, we, we will survive this. We will get up. We will get past this. Um, and there still is tremendous opportunity in the markets, both intraday and also tremendous opportunity for long-term investment as well. So anyone that has any questions, all right. You guys, the chat room is open from 4.30 to 5.30 Eastern time. And on top of that, right now, we've got a 30% off um, deal on a membership shoe trading group, okay? Just click on the link in the description below if you guys are interested. It's 30% off for one year all-inclusive membership. You'll get access to every single thing we have to offer for 30% discount. That's coupon code TTGBM2020, okay? So with that said, 
I hope these videos are helping you guys through this volatility and through this intense um, you know, time of chaos. This truly is a historic moment. And we're going to get into this TVIX trade. So make sure you guys always like this video, comment below. Let me know what you are trading and what your thoughts are about what's going on in the world. It is pretty crazy chaotic. I'd like to hear your thoughts. And of course, make sure you hit that notification bell to don't miss any more of these videos. Let's get to the SPY. Epic gap down today. And we actually halted again um, for the second time this week. Um, so the overall markets uh, were halted. Okay, overall markets were halted today. You can see right here, we halted on the gap down. Those circuit breakers trigger when the market is down 7%. So we gapped down, we were down 7%, and we halted for 15 minutes, then we reopened. Um, the next level of halt would be 13%. So if we went down 13%, the market would halt again, and eventually 20%, the market would halt and would not reopen for the rest of the day if we hit a 20% down um, day. This comes on the back of the selling really started yet last night uh, when President Trump gave a speech at nine o'clock about um, the coronavirus and announcing the that we are closing our borders off from Europe. Um, so pretty much a travel ban. Anyone coming from Europe, sorry, can't get in for the next 30 days starting at Friday at midnight. That goes into effect. Um, and it, you know, the markets are are panicking about what's going on and what this is going to do to the economy because essentially you're seeing parts of the U.S. economy starting to completely shut down. Um, you know, businesses are closing, schools are closing, no one is traveling, um, events are being canceled, you know, professional sports are being canceled. The U.S. economy is shutting down and that's going to be a major hurt, a uh, major hit to the U.S. economy and GDP growth and corporate earnings that could lead to layoffs, that unemployment starts to rise. Um, you know the snowball effect could be could be pretty pre pretty nasty, um, but we have to go through this in order to get past it. The only way this market will bottom is when this virus is under control. So the ext whatever extreme measures need to be taken now to ensure that that happens, it it has to be done. It has to be done. All right. So, but the markets don't like it. Um, you know, no one likes travel bans and, and getting signs that the economy is starting to slow. So that's what happened here to, here this morning, guys. And it really started last night. The futures really started to sell off very hard last night. I was watching the futures market last night when President Trump was speaking and I was just in shock. I'm like, oh, my God. And I couldn't believe how far the market was selling off last night. And then it continued into this morning and we got halted. Coming into the day, I'm thinking to myself that I don't think we're going to bounce back here today. Um, I thought today was going to kind of be a flush out day and an opportunity for me to get long the TVIX. The problem was we had such a huge gap down in the markets that we had such a huge gap up in the TVIX. I had to wait for some type of a recovery. I had to wait for some type of a bounce so I can get myself into that position. So what I ended up doing after the trading halt, okay, we just flushed down to 250 and then we rallied all the way back to 260. 260, this level was very, very important to me. OK, not only you have the 38.2 Fibonacci level sitting here, but I'll draw a line across that 260. When I take you guys out to the daily chart and we pan this out, you will see back here. Right there. And right there, you had nice little areas of support and again, right there at 260. So I got it. We have a little a little previous support level. On the daily chart, and then we've got the 38.2 Fibonacci level here intraday. So right on that rejection, I jumped in a TVIX position right there. Was my TVIX entry? I'll take you guys to my chart now, so you guys can see I'm long the TVIX at 378.15 with a stop loss if the spy gets above the high of the day, which is that 259 area. This really required as much discipline and patience as I possibly could ever have imagined. Um, guys, I was down 30 dollars a share on this position at one point because the market was just trading sideways slowly bouncing and as the fear was starting to dissipate because the market was not was no longer crashing the tvix started to just fade and we were fading and fading and fading and this is a 70 point move okay from from high to low so that gives you an idea of how volatile this tvix actually was and i'm sitting here saying but this trade is still intact okay Fear was starting to dissipate in the markets because after the halt, trading had kind of sub has had kind of stabilized. The the whiplash moves had slowed down. The volatility had slowed. 
and that's uh, the, the, the VIX, the T-VIX, which tracks the VIX, was starting to pull back in a little bit as fear was starting to subside a little bit, um, even though the, the pattern was still intact. And that's what I said to myself right here. When we put in this double top right there, that is when I said, I'm taking advantage of this opportunity and I'm adding to my position. And right there, I tripled my position in the TVIX. My average, uh, my entry on the initial uh, trade here is 378.15. I took double that position size, bought more at 348.72. That brought my average cost down to around 358.50. It was like 358.53 was my new average cost. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, guys, is because my trade is still intact. The idea is still intact. The pattern is still intact. Yes, I'm down on the trade, but this is not a losing trade yet. Now, let's say, for example, the SPY did this, okay, and it broke through the high of the day, and I added to the position there, that would be a very poor um, add. That would be a very bad place to be averaging down on your position. That would be the difference between averaging down on a losing trade versus averaging down on a trade that is still intact. This is why I do not have new and inexperienced traders average down on their positions because that is how you blow up your entire account. You'll have a new and experienced trader tomorrow. They're going to go, they're going to buy a stock at $3. It's going to drop to $275. They're going to buy more. It's going to go to $250. They're going to buy more. It's going to go to $2. They're going to get stopped out and they're going to blow up their entire account. Um, and you're going to blow up your entire account. So. That's why I never tell new and experienced traders to do it, okay? But there is a time and a place to do it, and it requires a certain level of risk management because now I've got extra risk on this position, and as soon as we pop our head above that, I've got to stick to my risk and, and cut it loose. But I took advantage of that double top, and now I got my position, my average cost all the way down on the TVIX, and then the market rolled itself over, and I start just peeling profits off the table. We get down there towards VWAP. I take a piece of profit off the table because now I finally was able to breathe and I finally went green on the trade and I wanted to immediately take some off because I had a very large position that I was uncomfortable with, with that level of volatility. So as soon as I went into the green, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to lighten up my position. I, I kind of escaped uh, a nasty one there. Um, and I lightened up my position. I took some off at 361. Okay. Then we start to, you know, start to drift our way lower. I take some more profit off the table on TVIX at 367.74. And then we continue to sell off all the way down, guys, to these new lows. And right there on this little double bottom, how we kind of made here, I exited the last piece of my TVX position at 382.11 from the new adjusted entry price of 358.53. So it ended up being a very nice trade PL wise. And then this is when the Fed made an announcement that the Fed was injecting $1.5 trillion of liquidity into the bond market. That is when the market had that 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 big rip um, action, but we have since sold that all the way back off, right back down to the dead lows of the day. Okay, so this is officially the worst day in Dow history. We're going to close down nine point. Well, I mean, right now we've got four minutes before the close. We're down one nine point one five percent. Another just absolute bloodbath disaster of a day, guys. And here we are finishing the dead, dead lows of the day. Um, it looks like the 2018 lows are now well, well, well within reach. And I think we've got to get down now and test this level. Uh, maybe we do it tomorrow. The faster we get there, I just want to get this over with. Um, but that's where we're headed, guys. We're heading back to the 2018 lows. So we are completely wiping out all of these gains in just a couple of days. It's just it's just mind blowing. Um, so I, that's where I think we get. I remain bearish on the market. No economic stimulus is is bouncing this market. The only thing that's going to bounce this market is going to be health related headlines about the virus being contained. And until that happens, I do not expect this selling pressure to ease up really anytime soon until we start to get some positive uh, news headlines surrounding the virus. And we're going to need the Federal, Federal Reserve and the Treasury to come together with some economic stimulus. Um, the Fed taking a step with the Treasury market, but they're going to have to do a hell of a lot more than that. Um, we'll see what Democrats and Republicans are able to agree on. Um, hopefully they can put their petty political BS aside 
um, and actually get something done for the American people and stop politicking and actually start working. They're also, Congress is set to go on recess next week. I think if any, if any single one member of Congress goes on recess next week and is not, and there's not an economic stimulus package that has been, has been passed, if there is not an economic stimulus package that's passed and they go on uh, recess, I hope the American people votes out every single one of those people that go on recess. Um, as long as there's not a plan in place to help the American people during this crisis, not a single one of them should go on vacation. Um, and that's something I feel very strongly about as we just make new fresh lows on the day. All right. Take care, guys. I'll see you all in chat tomorrow and we'll, you know, start to get into the end of this week and we'll look to close this week off, hopefully on a high note in the markets. But, you know, it's bittersweet because as I'm watching the market drop, I'm seeing my long term investments lose value. But we're still making money intraday trading this volatility. Um, tremendous opportunity in the markets and we are taking advantage of it left and right. So we'll see you guys what happens tomorrow. Fresh lows of the day. The bloodbath continues. I'll see you guys later.